Friday the 13th from 2009, the extended cut. In case you didn't think it was bad enough before. I'm not going to be comparing the various versions because this is the only one I've seen and I am quite grateful for that fact. So, the first movie, the original 1980 movie, is basically summed up in the first two minutes of this movie. You might think they do so with editing and images, iconic imagery, but no, they opt for painfully expositionary dialogue instead. The only words spoken that do not tell the story are no, no. Then we get about 20 minutes summing up the second movie, and after that we gratefully realize that that horrible bunch of people that we've just been introduced to were in fact not going to be the stars. And then our hope sinks deep down yet again because we realize that the new people are about as bad. Among them are a Jared Padalecki, if that's how you pronounce it. First scene standing in a business asking the owner if they can help him discover his missing sibling. And I instantly yearn for watching Supernatural instead of this piece of crap. The others are basically a bunch of brainless partying teenagers portrayed by 25 year olds and if they weren't so ethnically diverse I think you'd have a lot of trouble telling them apart. I think the two white guys have different hair colors and that's more or less the only real way you can tell them apart other than their behavior because while one of them is utterly obnoxious, the other, who is the owner of the family home that they're going to be spending the summer vacation in, is... he bears the distinction of being both an asshole and a pussy. The characters are quite horrible people. We don't care when they die, or if we do, it's because we're thinking, finally, that person died. The, the few indigenous people, the retnecks that we meet, and the people who come by to visit, have a bit of a contest over who can be the most obnoxious, hateable, utterly intolerable excuse for a human being. There's also a really weird habit in this of people talking to themselves to deliver really questionable comedic material, which is never funny, and to, I don't know, express through words what these people are not capable of expressing through, you know, facial expressions and movements. Basically, they soliloquy, and it ain't Macbeth. The dialogue. Painful every step of the way. I'm not sure if it's worse when they are clearly expressing their thoughts and desires or when they are being chased. In that situation, their vocabulary goes down to basically no, fuck, and the occasional shit. Early on, we do get a campfire ghost story retelling of Jason. You can wonder why they then decided to, before that, have exposition explain that story, but whatever. And this ghost story actually does sort of work. It's just unfortunate that surrounding it 
in the dialogue are such gems as did you know you can drink your own piss and yeah just wow the Jason is it's a bit of a reimagining of him and it ain't bad the attacks are brutal and somewhat to the point we do get some stalking the death scenes other than basically one or two in the opening portion of the film the first 23 minutes are really not creative at all but a few of them are effective which is quite surprising because we do not care about almost anyone who gets killed Jason is leaner, he's faster, he's a bit more of a hunter. Of course, he does still kill in surprisingly painful ways, which leads me to think that they try to deconstruct the character, but then they kind of stuck with a couple of things that made sense before. Back when he was a mindless killing machine zombie, sometimes literally so, it made sense that he killed you in this really horrible way because you didn't really... there wasn't really a lot of intelligence there to speak of. You know, maybe it didn't make sense, but you could kind of forgive it because he wasn't exactly the sharpest knife in the tool shed, so sure, he does that. You know, it's not like he suddenly exuded a an immense amount of intelligence, you know, basically everything he did was destroy. In this, he hunts them somewhat, and it's maybe somewhat like they're invading his territory and they shouldn't have done that. But, if he's trying to make an example out of these people, then why does he hide the bodies? This is revealed pretty early on, maybe half an hour into the movie, the bodies have not been found, he's been moving the cars, everything that was left over by these people, except for one thing, which I'll get into in the spoiler portion. So, yeah, he's making an example of these people by killing them in horrible, painful ways, but he's not letting anyone see that they're being killed. Yeah. The performance of Jason is quite good. You are quite terrified of him, and he does have some of a... you know, the... again, that kind of unstable quality. You don't know what to expect from him, and that works. And there genuinely is some tension and suspense in this. If the plot wasn't so just there to get these people out into this situation, if the deaths were more creative, I mean, as the movie ends, you get these panning shots of the setting, and you realize how many things the writers did not use that would have been interesting to use for death scenes. The effects are also very good. There's some handheld camera during the attack scenes and it tends to work, though at times it goes by so fast that you can barely tell what is going on, and that's a bit unfortunate. And if the acting wasn't such shit if the characters some of them do make sense they're just not likable basically there are maybe two likable people in this entire thing the movie is 95 minutes without credits I don't know how long the original one was and I guess that's 
basically what there is to say about the movie. It does stay true to the basic iconic imagery. Yeah, the DVD comes with a couple of featurettes. I guess around 40 minutes worth of featurettes. One detailing the so-called seven best kills, I beg to differ. One about the rebirth of Jason. I'm sure he's used to them by now. And then there are also some alternate scenes. The various interviews and behind-the-scenes footage are interesting enough, though in some of the interviews, these kids show that they have no fucking clue what they're talking about. Yeah. You know how some people, when they're currently in the spotlight, they think they know everything and that their word is basically law, you know, that anything they say, you know, they can do no wrong. These people think that. And they're wrong. They're, they're really, really wrong. But I don't really have to tell any of the real horror fans because they're going to be calling bullshit on the things they say that they're, that are completely off the wall. So anyway, that was my spoiler-free review of Friday the 13th of 2009, which currently, luckily, does not look to be getting a sequel. Yes, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.